this is Dan Giffen at the Lodge Recording Studios here in Indianapolis, Indiana. I uh, just want to let you know that we have some really fun gear that the Ableton Music Producer Program is going to be teaching for the three-month class. We have the Impulse, the Akai APC40 MK2, we have the Push 2 controller, and we're going to be teaching a lot of really good analog gear already here at the Lodge Recording Studios. Uh, special thanks to Sam Ash for offering our students a special discount and we hope that you can consider enrolling with us sometime in the near future and it's going to be a good time. So here's another Ableton tutorial to help you guys out and if you have questions visit thelodgestudios.com slash academy. So today I'm going to walk you through the basics of recording a drum rack inside of Ableton which is awesome for coming up with your own sounds. You can create uh, a drum kit for whether live performance you want to perform it or whether you just want to have a bunch of really cool drum sounds that you customize and use it in the studio to record and then take it live later. I really love using drum racks because you have full control over the sound and you can do so much within it. Um, and you can actually create a drum rack inside of a drum rack inside of another drum rack and have a drum rack inception and it, it goes super deep but today we're just going to stick with the basics on how to navigate and create a drum rack so if I click on the drums folder here in the browser I can load a preset of a drum rack or if I wanted to I can see these drum hits here and I can load in each individual sample but right now I'm just gonna grab a preset of a drum rack that I know sounds decent so I'll just double click it'll create a drum rack in here for me and now you can see there's a couple views and don't let it overwhelm you at first if this is your first time using it uh, I have these icons over here on the left and now you see there's a ton of different samples here in this box on the far left I'm gonna go ahead and close this window you can open and close windows here um, this is basic basically your starting point I can open up macro controls. We're not going to worry too much about that. I can open up a chain, which is where we're going to be mostly diving into today. And then I can also open up the device view of each individual sample and take more control over each individual sample here. So let me close that for now. I'm going to open the chain. So if I click, you can see we can navigate through each individual sample and they'll be highlighted over here as I click through them. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my computer keyboard just to play each individual sample. And if you notice that, uh, you know, when you start playing on your MIDI keyboard or on your computer keyboard, sometimes the, the it's not in the right key. It's not in the right scale right here. If I look, I can see if I scroll up and down here, I can drag a ton of different samples. And each individual cell, that's what we call these, each individual cell has its own note value. So if you're playing on a, a keyboard and you're sending MIDI into a drum rack, then you know, okay, if I'm playing C in this octave, then um, that's that's where that sample is going to be. So if you're using your keyboard, your computer keyboard, hit X or Z to go up and down, and you can see that the it'll light up there on the left, left hand side. So right now, I'm just going to record something really quick in this drum rack I'm going to double click and create a, uh, a new MIDI clip on this track this drum rack track and it's going to be pretty cool we'll see what happens so for time's sake I'm just going to draw in something alright now I'll go back to my other view so I can either double click up here and go back to it or I can hold shift tab shift tab is a shortcut I can also go down here to this window when I'm selected on this track down in the bottom right hand corner I can click the the clip view or the device view so for now I'm going to go back to the device view and we have several parameters in here we can play with uh, first of all I'm just going to show you the basics we have our volume so if I hit play I can adjust the volume of the samples and you'll see them highlighted over here as they play So if I turn down the kick you won't hear it or if you turn it back up now we can also pan, which is cool for creating depth in a mix, so you don't necessarily always want everything in a song being straight down the middle, so you can, I can pan you know, one side of the hi-hat to the left and the other to the right. Um, same thing with other instruments. And I can also mute the track, so this is um, turning it on or off. I can mute the kick. and I can also solo each one individually. 
Now, if, say I have this this uh, snare right here, or this clap sound that I have going, and I'm not really feeling it. I can swap it out pretty easily with the hot swap button here. So if I click this, it'll turn orange, and you'll see over in the browser, I can change out the clap with anything just by double clicking and selecting a different one. So I kind of like that. I'll just double click and it'll automatically replace it in the chain here inside the drum rack. Which is kind of cool and it's good for, you know, swapping out, starting with a preset of a drum rack and then swapping out certain samples that you like or don't like. And so that's basic, that's the very basics of just working inside the drum rack. Uh, you have your volume control. Also, one more thing I want to show you real quick is we have the choke feature. And if you have a normal hi-hat on a drum set, uh, the hi-hat is going to either be open or closed. There's really not a whole lot of middle ground. So if I want to choke the hi-hat, I can uh, put my foot down on the pedal and it'll stop. And when I open it and hit it, it'll ring out but I want that to interact maybe like a real hi-hat would. And you can do this with any of the samples. I'm going to make the choke the same exact number with the hi-hat close as I am open. And it's already done that for me in this preset. But if I change it to none, you'll hear the difference. So let me change both of these to none and I'll hit play. And you can hear that this sound it just keeps ringing out. But if I make both of them the same number, then one will cut off the other as they interchangeably come in and out of the clip as they play. So where is it? There it is. So I'll change that. And now you'll hear it one cut off the other as it's played. So there's a quick overview of the drum rack in Ableton Live. Don't forget to check out thelodgestudios.com slash academy for more information about our Ableton Live music producer class. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and look forward to seeing you next time.